Hi, it's Wayne from howtofish.com.au. It's cold, it's wet, and it's locked down. So I'm wearing my mask, come down to the Yarra River near my home just to do a little bit of fishing. I've been starved for fishing, so <laughs> I want to uh, get out and do that now. But because it's quite cold, in fact, it's very cold, it's unlikely there's going to be too much activity, but let's have a shot at it anyway. The first thing I do when I arrive at a fishing spot is to get some burley in the area. Here I'm using my blood and guts burley pellets and a mixture of a couple of other pellets that I'm working on at the moment. I just get that into the water in front of me, that gets the fish active and searching for food while I'm setting up. The rig I was using was really simple, it was just a bean sinker tied onto a swivel, a bead there to protect the knot, and then on the other end where I have my hook, I've tied a length of 8 kilogram braid. It's a camouflage braid and it's very supple so that the hook and the bait move very very naturally in the water. It's very very fine, the fish won't notice there and then I've got a size 4 hook. And the bait I'm using is a nice big worm, really effective in this type of water. In very cold weather bait placement is going to be really really important. Here the water is flowing quite fast and in cold weather the fish are going to want to keep out of that. They want to have the comfort of not having to fight the current. So I was looking for an area in front of me that had virtually no flow at all. That was where I was going to put my bait. The real challenge in waters like this is negotiating away from snags. In front of me and to the right there was a fallen tree as you can see here. So if I hooked a fish it was going to go for that straight away. Closer to the bank there was more trees, there's a fallen log here. So this is what I had to be aware of when I'm trying to fight fish if I manage to catch one. After I cast in I kept a trickle of my burly pellets going in. Not a lot, just enough to stimulate the fish. The smell was going downstream and hopefully attracting the odd fish up to my bait. It took an hour and a half before the, I saw the first signs of a bite. The line was moving a little bit, it was twitching at the tip of the rod. Very, very subtle. I had to make sure that that fish had that well and truly in its mouth before I struck in. And when I felt that it did, I then pulled in hard, leant into that fish and there was something on the end of the rod. So thankfully, I'd actually hooked a fish. And I was so happy catching a fish, or at least hooking one, in these really cold conditions, getting them to feed was uh, quite an accomplishment. Then all I had to do was get it in, which is the next hard bit. Just manoeuvring it around the snags. Of course, it swims around it under the line of my other rod, so it was a bit of a manoeuvre there. The other thing was, I was only casting in front of me, so it was very much at my feet. I didn't have my net set up properly which is par for the course and so I'm holding them onto my rod and trying to do that at the same time but thankfully um, I felt that I'd hooked this fish well enough that I could uh, I could focus a little bit on getting my net right. Then I had to just sort of manage it until it got a little bit tired below me and be able to get the net underneath it. It was a, a decent sized fish uh, and that's the great thing about these waters there's some there's some reasonable fish in there. It was only a carp, but I was so happy to have caught something, anything. Not bad fishing for suburban Melbourne. The interesting thing was that when I finally put this net down and decided to get the hook out of the fish's mouth, the hook just fell out. So while I felt that I'd actually struck into it okay, that hook was just in there. So if I'd actually let the, uh, so if I'd let the line go slack, the hook probably would have just dropped out.